My name is Larry Chahachik. I'm a uh, professor of soil science at NDSU, uh, working in uh, soil management, soil fertility, soil chemistry. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is something that is of interest to a lot of growers, particularly in the eastern part of the state, and that is evaluating our soils for the suitability for drainage. Tile drainage is a, it has been uh, increasing throughout a lot of parts of North Dakota because we've got issues uh, where uh, we've had too much water, we've got water standing on the soil, uh, it doesn't run off, our landscapes are pretty flat, so we end up with uh, at times problems with uh, areas of field flooding out or standing water and then we also get stuck with our equipment and that becomes a problem. Now, the, the reason we drain soils is to reduce the amount of excess water in the soil profile. And, and part of the problem is that we have a fairly flat landscape. Uh, we, I think we all know what a landscape is. That's the curvature of the earth, you know, with the hills and valleys and this sort of thing. But the one thing we don't always see is there's another landscape, and that's what we would call the hydrological landscape or the subsurface water table landscape. And water does move from higher areas to lower areas, but a lot of times when we see a wet area in the field that's not drying out, it may not be drainage. It may be that that water is actually the top of the water table. Now, an, an area where tile drainage uh, is very useful, and that is to remove excess water. We've got some problem soils. We've got three different types of soils that we find. We've got saline soils. These are soils that are affected with salts. Uh, and this is usually shown by a white crust on the surface when they're dry. We've got other soils that are sodic soils. These are affected with sodium and this, the, the high amount of sodium causes the soils to disperse. So either they're very greasy and slick when wet, or they're hard like concrete when they're dry. They do not allow water to move through there. Saline soils will because the salinity keeps the soil structure intact. It keeps it flocculated, we call it flocculation. And so water can move through the salt affected with salt, with sodium we can't. We've got another type of salts, and these are affected with both sodium and salts. Many times we can drain the sodic, uh, the sodium, the saline sodic soils fairly readily, but once you drain it and remove the salts, then they harden up again, and, and it affects our, our uh, uh, drainage. Uh, one of the things that we would like to do before we put in a tile drain, there are some other issues out here in the soils, but before we put in tile drains, it would be nice to know what these soils are like. And if there are some things in the soil profile between where the tile drain is and the soil surface. And many times we don't see these from the soil surface. Um, oftentimes we have these areas and fields that are wet and they stay wet all year long. Again, like I mentioned, it's probably the water table. Sometimes it could be a sodium layer underneath the surface. We do get plants growing on these soils sometimes, but the water just won't drain through them. And, and we have worked with some examples like that at the uh, Langdon Research Extension Center, where water will pond on the surface, but it will not go through even with tile drainage in there. Another problem that we have uh, in some of the areas, particularly, particularly along the edges, of the, uh, the Red River Valley, and that is we've got soils that are layered. Uh, we've got, and, and, and these layers are caused by the level of the water in the lake either rising or dropping over many, many years. When the lakes were high, uh, we would have deposits of clay because clay's particles are very small and water flows in, drainage water from the melting glaciers would flow in. The, the uh, Sands would drop out, therefore we've got these sand hills in southeastern North Dakota and the Cheyenne Delta. But then we would also have these clays that would get suspended and go out into the lake, and over time they would settle out. So you've got zones that are real sandy. Again, if the lake dropped and a lot of water came in fast, then it would bring in sand. So we've got layers of sand and clay. And, and sometimes if we put a tile line underneath those uh, layers of clay, we are not able to move water through those clay layers, especially if they're sodic. And there are some sodic soils in the valley here. There's some series like X-Line. It's one of the series uh, that a lot of times has these zones in there. And they're very sodic. So when they wet up, 
the, 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 the sodium causes the salts to swell and it just seals them off. I've seen uh, a tiled field with soils like this after a four inch rain with the, the discharge pumps pumping madly, but a week later there's still water standing on the soil surface because the water could not move through that, uh, those, those clay layers to form uh, or, or to, to, to get to the tile line and get drained and the water was pumped was coming out from somewhere else underneath those clay layers. We do have a tool uh, that's really kind of nice. It's called Web Soil Survey. It's uh, a website that's uh, uh, located with the uh, uh, USDA NRCS uh, website where you can go in there and find uh, on, the, on the main page, find uh, a uh, tab or a, a menu that says soils. Click on the soils, you'll come up with the soils page, you'll get some other information there and there's a green button there that says web soil survey. You click on that thing and you log into the web soil survey. Uh, the nice thing about this is there's a tremendous amount of all kinds of information in web soil survey. Next thing you do, you find your area, your field that you're interested in, and there's a number of different menu items there. I like to use uh, where the, the, the item where you can uh, uh, enter in your section, uh, township and range for the field uh, in North Dakota. And when you do that, it will bring up that section and then you can move to another part of the menu where you can click on uh, uh, a tab that, that allows you to draw a box around that field, or we call it the area of interest. That area of interest will, will delineate the, the area that you're interested in, and it will bring up a soils map of that area. Now embedded in the soils map is all kinds of information about those soils. And there are some other tabs uh, at the top. One of them is, well there, there's several, uh, one of them is called the Soil Data Explorer, where you can get into and look at a lot of different properties of these soils. And under there, there's another set of tabs. And what you might want to look at is soil properties and qualities. You get another menu and there's a whole bunch of different chemical and physical properties that you can log into. The one that you're most uh, likely or the most useful is something called the sodium adsorption value. Sodium adsorption value gives you a, a, an indication of, of uh, the sodicity of these soils. And the nice thing about this is you can look at different layers in the soil. And I like to go foot by foot by foot, or you can take a whole profile, four foot profile, and uh, look at what the SAR is. And what it does, it brings up a map of that field uh, showing this SAR. You can also go into the interpretive data that comes with it. There are tables, several tables, and, and there are tables in there that will show you the suitability for drainage, which are, are uh, ranked on a scale of zero to one. If, if your soils are closer to zero, they're very suitable for drainage. If they're closer to one, then they might have some serious limitations. Um, and, and, and so these will give you an idea of whether you're, you're going to have a problem with these fields. Uh, one nice thing is, is that you can sort of get an idea of the suitability of these soils. Um, and we're in the process of revising a publication, SF 1617, uh, uh, called Evaluating Soils for Suitability for Tile Drainage. Um, there are some tables in there listing the soil type, soil series that we know are sodic and those that may be sodic. Uh, and this also gives you an indication of potential problems. Most of the time, tile installers will look at the texture and they may look at the depth, but they don't look at some of these chemical properties. And so they may, it, it may seem that these soils are suitable for drainage, but these properties you can't see in there, the chemical properties are gonna influence how well or how, how uh, useful the drainage will be. So, uh, from, from, from this data, then you've got some reason to, or some basis to make a decision whether it's worth spending money to, to reduce or to, to, to drain your soils. 
The other thing is, I want to leave you that draining saline soils is not a problem. Uh, and and we, can, we can look at those things too, but it's really the sodium that causes the problem. Sodium and unseen layers of uh, different textures within that soil profile. If you have a soil that looks like a problem, get a soil scientist out there, pull a few cores and take a look at the profile. Um, you can even run some soil tests, run some salinity and sodium tests on them. It will give you an idea to confirm whether you've got it or not. The one thing you've got to remember is that soil surveys are generalized and there may be areas as large as five acres within that area with any soil type that may be a different soil type. And, and some of these inclusions, that, as we call them, could have sodium in them uh, or they may not. And so if you are able to sort of identify, uh, you know, the soil is what is out there or there's a lot of variability out there, then you can do, look at some other things and find some other uh, considerations on how to manage these soils. Uh, I've given you some ideas on, on some tools to use that are available. Uh, the, the Web Soil Survey is a very powerful tool because there's all sorts of things that you can use it for. Uh, suitability for tree plantings, building sites. There's a lot of data in there and, and uh, all of this is based on soils that have been collected around the state over time and analyzed in detail to look at what their actual physical and chemical characteristics are. And then they're linked to the various soil, uh, soil series within the surveys and, and, and you can get a generalization of, of how uh, soils will be productive or how useful they will be or if you're going to have some limitations on your use. Thank you.